You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. As you can see, we have a new episode of Fueled by Insanity. As the new build was released, I wanted to go ahead and work my way through that before going back to, um... Oh god, my brain is blanking out on me. Before going back to uh, Changeling Tail. So, since I've already done so much of this, I kind of wanted already. I kind of wanted to get the new update out of the way before I go back to that. So, anyway, guys, let's see what's in store for us in a new episode of Fueled by Insanity. All right, here we go. <clears throat> I'd rather have an actual meal, if that's okay, sir. <sighs> could, could you stop calling me sir? It feels a little weird. Oh yeah, sure thing. Sir. You're doing this on purpose now. Of course. It's fun. So, what are we getting to eat anyway? Good question. We can pick something up on the way if you guys want. Sounds good to me. Oh yeah, I forgot to ask. Where are we going anyway? My place first. Like I said, I'm waiting on a package today, so I don't want to miss it. Oh yeah, that's right. I guess we should head out now then, shouldn't we? Woohoo! We're going to Marshall's place! I've never actually been, come to think of it. That's because you always find an excuse to stay home when he invites you. Thanks for your contribution to this conversation, Darren. No problem. By the way, don't forget to bring your phone with you. Good habit to get into. No, right. I should do that now. I step into my room, happy to have a little time alone before I have to head out. On one hand, it'll be nice to get out, and this gives me an excuse to spend more time with Ted, though I was kind of hoping for some alone time with him today. On the other hand, I've never been to Marshall's house, so I do actually feel nervous. It's stupid, because I shouldn't feel nervous about it. Marshall's been my friend for years, but going new places always feels like this. <laughs> and yet I still took off, and took off into another city on my own despite that. I guess I'll try my best to not worry too much. Today's going to be a good day. I can feel it. I go ahead and grab my phone and place it in my pocket, not wanting to hold everyone else up for too long. I like this upbeat music. Marshall's home looks nothing like I expected. Then again, I'm not sure what I was expecting to begin with. I think his house is the most tidy one I've been to in a long time. I mean, there's stuff scattered all about the coffee table, but nowhere near as much as Darren's place. Plus, the furniture actually looks usable. I think the main surprise for me is the color theme going on here. Why is there so much red? I thought your favorite color was purple. My roommate wanted red, so now we have red. Oh, right. Roommates are a thing that exists, huh? Are you calling my roommate a thing? Wow, Jeffrey, I can't believe you think of his roommate as an object. I didn't mean it like that. In all seriousness, I approve. Red is good. Ted ruffles his shirt a bit as if to show off the fact that his clothes match the decor. So, is your roommate here? Do we get to meet them? No. Oh, why not? He's getting laid. What? Did I hear that right? No. Oh, nice. Who are you, and what have you done with Marshall? Something wrong? I've never heard you talk like that before. Well, what else was I supposed to say? I don't know. You just kind of said it so casually. I didn't expect it. Hey, sex happens. Is this really the same friend that I went to school with? Somehow I always assumed he was, I don't know, more innocent. I guess. I just never expected you of all people to be so casual about it. Is that? I don't know. I guess he never seemed like the type to say stuff like that openly. Hey, it's not like I'm telling you about my sex life. Just my roommates. That's not much better. You probably shouldn't go around talking about other people's sex lives. I never thought I'd hear you being the one to lecture others on what's socially acceptable. What's that supposed to mean? Do I need to remind you how we met? Or how you didn't ask your brother before bringing me over to live with him? <sighs> Does he really need to bring that up in front of Marshall? The bit about not telling Darren doesn't surprise me. 
Wow. I'm curious now how you met. Well... Wait, no, please don't tell him. I begin to fidget a bit as I brace myself for Ted to start telling the story of my failed attempt at stealing a muffin. I don't think Marshall knows about my bad habit, and I really don't want him to think worse of me if he finds out. I'm not sure why I care so much, considering we aren't that close to begin with. Then again, maybe that's why I don't want him to find out. I'm never sure where I stand with him, so a, small, so a small part of me always wants to impress him and not let him down, I guess. But the others, I have a better idea of what they think of me, so I don't have to worry as much about them finding out more. So I don't have to worry as much about them finding out more about my bad sides. Luckily, before Ted can tell the story, Marshall's attention is pulled away by a knock on the door. Uh, who's that? That would be my package. Oh, right, you did tell us about that, didn't you? <laughs> As Marshall heads out of the room to get to the door, Ted takes the time to sit on the couch, stretching his legs out when he does. Having fun there? Heh. <laughs> he feels nostalgic. What does? Getting to hang out with others, you know, getting to go visit friends and stuff. With Marshall out of earshot, I feel comfortable enough to make a joke, considering Ted brought it up to begin with. Sounds like it's a good thing I stole that muffin, then. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be here right now. I don't think that's the lesson you should be taking from this. Why not? Oh, that's me. Before Ted can retort, I get the, I get the startle of my life as Marshall sneaks up behind me. Hey. Ah! I take a second to catch my breath, unsure of whether or not he, of whether or not they heard, unsure of whether or not he heard me a second ago. Yeah, I know, boxes are scary. I'm about to ask what he means, but then I notice a thin rectangular box in his hands. What's that? It's a box. Of course, he chooses to be as literal as possible. Okay, but what's in the box? A drawing tablet. Ted's ears perk up almost instantly upon hearing that. Ooh, you do art? Nope. Then, what's it for? Art. But you just said you don't do art. Is it for your roommate? Nope. It's for me. Ted stares at Marshall, obvious confusion all over his face. Huh? It's fun watching Ted's response to Marshall's antics time and time again. Marshall used to do this to me all the time until I learned how to play along. It's a weird quirk he has where he likes to watch people struggle to understand what he does. I'm pretty sure it's the same reason he likes to call people sir. Still, I'm curious to know if, I, if I've got this correct, so I have to ask. I'm guessing you're wanting to learn to draw. Yep. Oh, I didn't think of that. What makes you want to draw? Is there a little kitty over here? You come over here, you sweet, sweet kitty. Yeah, so you go say hello to the audience, pretty boy. Yes. Oh, you are a sweet boy. <laughs> Oh, I hope you guys heard that. He's a sweet boy. Yeah. I got names for him. I call him Chonker, Chonkito, Moonbeam. A couple of names for him. <clears throat> you know how sometimes people say there's, say there's things they wish they could do? Things people wish they could do? Yeah, like how some people say they wish they knew how to draw or wish they knew how to play piano. Stuff like that. I wish I could draw, so I decided I'd do something about that and teach myself. Oh, that's pretty cool. What do you plan on drawing? A circle. A circle. A circle. So you ordered a drawing tablet just to draw... a circle. I plan on drawing other things after the circle. But a circle's what you want to start with. Yes. I like to start small. Drawing a circle should be easy. I guess that makes sense. So, anyway, since my package arrived early, we can go out and do stuff if you guys want. Here comes another yard! Hmm. Sure, what do you have in mind? I have a croquette set that I'm not that I have not got to use yet. It was a birthday gift from my aunt. Croquette? What's that? No, oh, I've heard of croquette. I'm an idiot! Oh, I've heard of croquet. I've never played, but I've read about it. 
It's a sport thingy, right? With the balls and mallets that you hit through metal rings. It's a s sports. Something like that, yeah. A sport thingy? I have no idea how to play. It's easy. I can teach you. Where are we going to set it up anyway? Your yard? There's a park pretty close by. I was thinking we could go there so we have plenty of room. Sounds good to me. Good music. We managed to arrive at the park at a good time. There's few people around and the weather is nice. The sun is pretty bright today, but there's a nice breeze to keep everything cool. Perfect days like that. I run off ahead, tired of waiting for the others. Ted seems to always find ways to make it take longer to get places than it should. It happened the other day when we met up with my friends, and it's happened today as well. I'm pretty sure the only reason we were able to make it to Darren's place in time that first night was because he couldn't exactly halt the train. Then again, he does make trips more enjoyable. He knows how to carry on a good conversation, even if it feels like I have nothing left to add. Usually, I'd be on my own when going places, so I'd be in my own head the whole time. While that's not a bad thing, sometimes it's nice to have someone to talk to. Most of this walk has been Ted and Marshall talking amongst themselves, but it's still been fun to listen in, even if I don't know anything about the books they're, re they're referencing. I've never ha had much in common with Marshall, so any conversation we usually try to have tends to fall flat if there's not another person to carry them. Once I get to the center of the park, I stop and turn around as I wait for Ted and Marshall to catch up. I drop the two mallets I was carrying onto the ground, figuring there's no reason to still be holding them. It doesn't take long for the two to catch up. Marshall sets the wooden holding rack on the ground, and Ted drops the mallets he was carrying. Technically, we could have just had one person carry everything on the rack, since that's what it's for, but splitting things up does make it easier, especially since Marshall's, uh, Marshall isn't exactly very strong. Right, now to set everything up. Need any help? No, it shouldn't take long. Marshall picks up a stack of metal wickets and starts sticking them in the ground. I would watch, but Ted gets my attention instead. I think I may be making a new best friend. I'm your new... I'm your new best friend? Yes, you too, but also Marshall. It's been so long since I've had anyone I can talk to about different series I've read. What about me? You told me about... Setsutata, or whatever it was on the train. Sesato. Yeah, that thing. Talking with you is fun. I just meant that I haven't had someone to talk about to uh, to talk to about all these books I've who's actually read them as well. He was telling me stuff about Sasato's author that I never knew. Apparently, he was a big fan of RPGs, and the first book was heavily based on a game called Star Ringers. I expect what he says to go in one ear and out the other, but as soon as he mentions Star Ringers, my attention is his. <clears throat> Wait, really? I used to play that game with Darren. I don't remember much about the story, but it was pretty fun. Oh, really? Yep. Ooh, maybe we should play together sometime. Um, uh, I've, uh, never actually played an RPG before, but I love doing new things. It sounds fun. Woohoo! It doesn't take long at all for Marshall to return. I'm done. You guys ready? I look over at the area he set up and don't quite understand what any of it means. The wickets are in a pattern that looks like the number 8. There are wooden stakes in the ground at both ends. I don't get it. Right. Just pick a color. I look at the mallets on the ground and notice that all six have different colors. There's red, blue, green, yellow, orange, and black. The first thing I, the first thing I think of to ask is, why is there no purple? Oh yeah, did, they did just kind of leave off Marshall's favorite color, didn't they? A sad fate. Ted and I continue staring at the mallets, trying to decide which colors we want to be. Until finally, Ted walks over and picks one up. I'll be orange. Why orange? Because it matches my fur, of course. That means you go last. Why is that? Does the game discriminate against people with orange fur? Yes. Also, the stripes on the post show the order the colors go in. Orange is last. By posts, I assume he means the wooden stakes in the ground with the colored stripes going down them. Now that I know the order of the colors, I know which one to choose. I'm blue, then. I go first. Not a bad idea. You'll need any advantage you can get. Says you. 
Ted sticks his tongue out at me, and I know I immediately and I know immediately that I need to make sure I beat him at any cost, at any and all cost. I may have sucked at games at the arcade, but that was different. That was because I was tired. Today I'm a lot more well rested, and I feel ready. I'll be green. Marshall picks up the green mallet as well as the corresponding colored balls for each of us and sets them near the post closest to us. Uh, why green? I have my reasons. I'm not sure what he means by that, but I also don't bother asking. I doubt I'd get a straightforward answer, even if I did. You start right here. Marshall sets the blue ball between the wooden post and the double wickets near nearby to it. He then motions me to come over to him, so I do. The first thing you want to do is hit your ball through both of these. Nope. All right, guys. It is time to pause it right here. I'll go ahead and uh, do, a, do a little save right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Fueled by Insanity. After we're done with this build, we'll go right back to... Um, yeah, you... Actually, you know what? I'll, uh, next video. Next video will be uh, next video will be Changeling Tale. So uh, I'll just be adding this to the rotation. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.